Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the cross that he went to. We thank you that you did not spare your own son, but offered him up as a sacrifice so that we might be reconciled to you and know you. We praise you for this. We love you in response to this. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this is the time in our service where we partake in communion together. We get to enjoy communion, the Lord's table together. And this morning, we're going to look at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. You can go ahead and turn there in your Bible. Jesus knows his time to go to the cross is just about here. And so he turns his attention to his father and he prays. What we're going to do, we're going to look at just the first three verses of John chapter 17 as we prepare our hearts. John 17, starting in verse 1. Says Jesus spoke these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Here Jesus says, the hour has come, and no more sobering time has ever existed but this one. All of history since the fall had been moving toward and waiting for this time, and what took place at this time will be rejoiced in and over for all eternity. Jesus' very purpose for becoming a man was for this hour. It was the hour where the sinless one would take upon himself the sin for all who, for all time, would repent of their sins and trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In verse 2, Jesus refers to these as all whom you have given him. And look at what Jesus prays in verse 1. He says, glorify your son that the son may glorify you. The central theme and force of this prayer, the central theme and force of Jesus' heart is a supreme passion for the glory of God. Jesus prays, glorify your son, but for the explicit purpose that the son may glorify the father. And at Jesus' darkest hour, he was undeterred from his commitment to the Father's glory. The temptation we all face at times in fierce trials and struggles is to take our eyes off of God, to fix them on something or someone else, and usually it is ourselves. But Christ here demonstrates extraordinary devotion to the Father in that when he knew what awaited him at the cross, the unfathomable pain accompanied by the righteous wrath of God, he pleaded that God's purposes would come to fruition in him and through him. Before God saved us, we wanted nothing to do with his glory. We wanted to suppress the truth about him. We had no desire to seek his glory. And yet now in Christ, we can share in this desire that Christ was wholly committed to. Because Jesus was concerned with the Father's glory to the point of laying down his life in our place. We too now can be concerned with the Father's glory. And what a gift. This is not a burden for us. This is a gift and a privilege to get to live for the almighty God to bring glory and honor to him. We too can pray, regardless of our circumstances, Lord, in this moment, do your work in me that I might glorify you. And then look at verse 2 again. Jesus, having authority over all flesh, grants eternal life to those the Father gave him. Jesus grants eternal life to all whom the Father has given him. And he tells us what eternal life is in verse 3. He says eternal life is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, to know the Father is to know the Son, and no one can know the Son without knowing the Father. And Jesus says this is eternal life. It is to know God and the one whom he sent. 
that is Jesus. It is not merely to know about God. It is to know God, to know him in your heart, to experience God redemptively. It's to enter into a personal relationship with God. It is a relationship that's characterized by devotion, submission, love. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is our Father. But he is also our Master as we enter into that relationship with him. And it's a relationship that's only entered into because of this hour that Jesus is speaking of in John 17. Where he laid down his life. As a sacrifice in the place of all who believe as he was crushed and beaten and mocked and scorned as we just sung. As his body was broken and his blood was spilt, he took on himself the wrath that each one of us who are in Christ deserved. And as a result, we have received from him a righteousness that is not our own that has granted to us reconciliation to the Father. And this is such a precious truth. Really, the, the cornerstone of our faith is found in Christ and what he has accomplished. And so we worship and we praise and we thank him. And this morning we will remember Christ's body that was crushed. And we'll do that by taking a piece of bread and a cup of juice. And the bread is simply just a uh, a tangible reflection of his body. There's nothing super spiritual in the bread that you'll be served in the cracker, but it's a reminder of Jesus' body. And same with the juice is a reminder for us of his blood. And so we'll take these things in just a moment and we'll remember Christ with thankfulness and worship. And this time is specifically for those who are in Christ. If you're not yet in Christ, there's nothing for you in regards to the bread and the cup to remember how they have intersected with your life, how what they represent in Christ's body and blood have intersected with your life. And so we ask you to let them pass by as this is a time for believers. But if you're not yet in Christ, we would also plead with you to not delay in repentance towards him. And we'd love to talk to you more about what that means, what that looks like. And myself or any of the people that you see up front or we'll have one of our pastors at the information table, any of us would love to talk with you more. We'd actually plead with you to do that if you're not in Christ. Even if in this moment you're scoffing in your heart at these realities, we still would love to speak with you and tell you more about Christ and what he has accomplished and the gift of salvation that is offered to you today. So men, come and serve us. And as your heart is prepared, take the bread and cup and then I'll come and and uh, pray, and then we'll continue on this morning in our worship together.